So, welcome back to Third Age Reforged and to another battle replay, and we're going to be making a return to Edoras now, which, for me anyway, it actually feels like it wasn't that long ago that we played on Edoras, but by the time this one comes out, I do intend for this one to be pushed a little bit further away. I'm recording it now, really, because I don't actually want to forget about it, uh, but it's highly likely to be probably November time by the time this one actually comes out. Um, so yeah, by that point, there will have been ample time between the last Edoras replay and this one to the point where it should still be quite fresh uh, for people. Um, and Edoras is one of those settlements which is difficult to defend. It's the first settlement, I believe, that WK actually made some adjustments to, and it's much needed adju adjustments for those of you who remember the old version of Edoras. It really was just two roads up, and it was overly choke pointy, but it was also quite exposed. So for the defenders, you didn't really have any leeway on how to approach the battle unless you decided to sally out with cavalry. That's no longer the case because there is more space within the settlement. The attackers also have a couple more options in the sense they don't just need to throw themselves against the defensive line and hope that their skirmishers and their martial might in melee is enough to see them through. There is another way round into the settlement as well and if the defenders make some mistakes earlier on you're in a much better place to be able to punish that now as the attackers. So the improvements most certainly work both ways and it is going to be uh, a rather interesting little civil war today because indeed it is going to be three elven factions on the attack and it's going to be the fourth elven faction in Mirkwood who appear to have broken away from their brethren, Thranduil leading a little bit of revolt and taking the western kingdoms of men along with him on his joyride, maybe he had a few too many barrels of uh, fine Dorwinian wine, and now the other elves are going to have to try and uh, beat him back into submission. We shall see if they are capable of doing so. We'll go through the attackers first and foremost, starting with Beastie 70 here. He's going to be playing as Linden. Linden, on the attack, because of their light armour, they can be a difficult faction to make work. They do have a few things that kind of make up for the fact they've got light armour, uh, but they're certainly going to have to rely on their big brothers in Ladris and also the slightly more damaging and still heavily armoured Lothlorien um, in order to do the heavy lifting, certainly early on, otherwise they're going to be um, on the end of some nasty arrow fire Gondor, uh, but especially Mirkwood, of course, have got some very damaging archers, which if they can get into Linden, they will be able to be very efficient indeed. Harland and Guard are probably the best option Linden have for trying to engage in an archer-on-archer -archer fight because they are slightly more damaging and they do have a shield value at the very least so they're not completely defenseless to the kind of damage that's going to be coming their way. They are also a spear unit so it's going to be a little bit more difficult for any cavalry that wants to sally out to get into them and do and um, get away from the damage as much as they would like. Obviously if you still get a charge into a unit like this it's still going to do a pretty hearty amount of damage indeed. Harland and Vimpatry are very capable melee combatants, however. Linden do stand apart a little bit in the way that they're structured in comparison to the other elven factions, it must be said. They're a little bit more... Their entry-level units are probably on a slightly higher tier than the other elves, to be honest with you. But then they don't have... The way their tiers are structured just works differently. The Harland and Vimpatry are going to be better than stuff like the Swords of Rivendell, the Blades of the Wood, that sort of thing, but they're not going to be as good, obviously, as in Ladris Guardians, Lauren and Axeman, Hiri Alth. But consequently, Linden also have the Noldering Guard, which is then another tier above that, more akin to the Elder Enway. So they're a weird faction in how they're laid out, Linden, when you compare them to the other elves. The other elves certainly have a lot of similarities to one another in terms of how their rosters have been designed. Linden have got a completely different thing going on, um, and it would perhaps work a little bit better if their weakness wasn't so apparent. Um, but again, that's perhaps a discussion for another time. Linden can still be effective, they're just a very difficult faction to play. Harland and Infantry, though, could be a good option here. If they can get into melee, they are a very efficient unit indeed. One thing that Linden certainly do bring to the table is pikemen. If they're still alive in high numbers towards the late game, especially seeing as Mirkwood don't have any phalanx units, Gondor do, but they are in far shorter supply as it pertains to pikemen than the, what Linden can produce. So something like late on, the Mithlon pikemen, considering they are perhaps on a similar tier to something like the Urukai pikemen, they are more damaging and more effective in melee, but they lack the armour that the Urukai pikemen have, so very similar costs overall, kind of a similar unit. Interesting to see if the Mithlon pikemen can be used as effectively as we've seen the Orcish pikes used in the past. Four Linden archers out here, the lighter Linden archer, they're cheaper, but of course very vulnerable to arrow fire, even more so than many, much of the Linden roster. The thing that Linden really do bring to the table in a situation like this, though, for me, is the javelins. The Mithlon Marines in particular can be very useful, because once they're out of their javelin ammunition, albeit that does come about a little bit sooner than with the four Linden Marines, they can also make a nice makeshift line infantry, so it means you can do high damage at range, and then you also have a unit which can add itself to the front line and keep the attacks going for just that little bit longer. 
high melee defense on Linden also helps them out in that regard, especially with something like the Mithlon Swordmaster, it's nice and damaging. Under normal circumstances, a unit like this would be incredibly efficient, and indeed they may still be against the likes of the Gondorians, but considering there is an Elven faction on the defense as well in Mirkwood, um, that melee defense and high damage value advantage that the Elves normally have may not be quite so apparent, but it is three Elven factions on the attack, let's not forget. And the Noldoran units are at the back. This is the unit. These are the units that buck the trend, really, when it comes to Linden, because they most certainly do have lots of armor, much more akin to the Noldor of old. Noldoran Guard are not multiple HP, but they're a fantastic unit of heavy infantry. Overall, they are going to be, in terms of stats, better than something like the fully upgraded Imladris Guardians. The only catch to that is they are more expensive, and you can't mass them up to quite the same extent. Um, but even so, it will make up for Linden's weakness to a certain extent. And then you have the Noldoran Blade Masters. Multiple HP, they are unshielded, but they are a really strong unit of heavy swordsmen, certainly one of the strongest in the game. Um, yeah, when it comes to particularly the Gondorians, they don't really have anything in melee that can match this. Even the Mighty Palace Guard from Mirkwood have got a different focus, they're more all rounders, whereas the Noldoran Blade Masters are specifically anti infantry killing machines, which against the more lightly armoured uh, Mirkwood units could be very, very effective. And there's some Harland and Riders out here as well. Spear Cavalry and Melee, Bow Cavalry at range. So they're going to be a pretty good unit to patrol around out here and potentially intercept any sally outs that the defenders may have. A little bit more at home, perhaps, when it comes to dealing with this sort of settlement, the Womb Raider playing as Imladris. They're a much more heavy duty faction, but it does look as though he's gone very high tier, which may end up being a bit of a mistake because there's no getting away from the fact that you're going to take damage as the attackers on Edorus because eventually it's going to constrict into a single choke point. And that's where, if you're unable to wear the defenders down, you can end up paying the price for an army like this. Unupgraded Imladris Guardians, they may not have the armor upgrade, but they're still going to be absolutely fantastic in melee, especially in this kind of battle, tailor-made for the fantastic unit on the front line. You have the Swords of Rivendell, which on this occasion are going to be effectively not quite as effective versions of the Harland Infantry Linden and Brawl, but they are cheap enough to the fact that for the for the price and yeah, you can you can bring them in decent numbers. I mean, having a look at this, actually, the army isn't tiny by any means. The Swords of Rimdale do bog it out a little bit, so uh, I do take that back. Elder Enway Spearman, as I said, the Noldoran units for Linden, the Elder Enway are the equivalent for Imladris, really, and the fact that individually they're very high tier. They're not quite bodyguard tier, as akin to the, like, the Noldoran guard are over for Linden, but they're all but. Really, it's only a second hit point and a slightly lower unit count that prevents them from being in that class. Bruinen River Wards, similar to the Mithlond uh, Swordmasters, only more of a focus around their armour than melee defence, which on this occasion is going to serve them well. More Imladris Guardians, Noritino Warriors for that ranged presence and also the fact they're pretty decent in melee with their twin axes. You know, Elder Enway Swordmasters, which are a fantastic unit, of course, fantastic stats. Got some Spears of Rivendell back here, which add a little bit of armour piercing to the mix. Um, I did notice as well they do have the Imladris Sentries. This is a stronger individual pike unit than Linda brought in the Mithlond Pikemen. Linden are capable of bringing more pikes than a Miladris, but on this occasion they've chosen not to, um, which is understandable because if you bring too many pikes you're going to have to push them forward early and then they're just going to get shredded by RM fire. This is the sort of unit which is going to be really difficult for the defenders to deal with later on, however, if they don't have the appropriate resources. And finally the Gwaithi Miradane, which this pretty much is going to be the Gondorian player's worst nightmare. Can't get away from the fact that though, that huge armor-piercing damage that they wield in those hammers um, is going to be really effective against the Gondorian legions. Less so against Merc, would it must be said, but even still. Specialized units like that can come in very handy against the Kingdoms of Men. And finally, Y2K86 playing as Lothlorien, several units of Spears of the Wood on the front line, much akin to the Swords of Rivendell that we saw for Imladris. They're going to be here to bulk out the numbers a little bit. Yes, they're lightly armoured and you know, Blades of the Wood very similar, only a Swordsman version. But you do need these numbers when you're on the attack for the reasons that I've already laid out when you're playing on a map like Edoras. Upgraded Kindred of Caliborn. With the terrain being what it is and the fact they have to shoot upwards, I'll be interested to see how well the split shot projectiles do here, but worst case scenario, they fall short at the mark there, but with the armour upgrade especially, they're still fantastic in melee, the Kindred of Caliborn. Better than most of what Lothlorien can field in melee elsewhere, not to say that Lothlorien's main line is weak, just that the Kindred of Caliborn is so strong up close and personal. More Blades of the Wood. Also got a couple of units of Law and Armed Warriors, which is understand an understandable conclusion because of the presence of Gondor on the defence. Also got some Lauren Arn Spearmen. They're not as strong as the Elder Enway, but they are cheaper and you can bring them in greater numbers as Lothlorien, so that is the trade-off you make, and obviously they're still very high quality because they're elves. And some woodland protectors here at the back. It's very likely there's some hidden units around here as well, knowing that it's Lothlorien. Probably some Karen Amroth Rangers into the mix. Now let's see what's on the defence as well. We've got some Gondorian civilians at the front, played by Valkarion, with Tweak playing as Mirkwood. 
Civilians are obviously just going to be pushed towards the front and they're going to get ripped apart by most of the Elven attackers, to be honest with you, but they will stand in the way of the Elves and perhaps the more lightly armoured ones won't like that as they get continuously shut up by the defenders. Gondor Militia Infantry, much a, a very similar kind of thing for them, only they will at least stay standing for a little bit longer. They've at least been given basic training as militia rather than just angry farmers and farmers' wives with pickaxes and shovels. Some fully upgraded Gondor spearmen. Gondor very much are going to be the just solid brick of armour that's going to stand in the way, and I'd imagine Merkwood will be much more the damage dealers. If they can interplay with one another like that, they have every chance of winning this fight in spite of the high quality attackers they perceive, and perhaps that lack of numbers the three elven attackers will bring to the field will also be in their favour in the end. If the attackers cannot make that quality advantage count quickly, that may prove to be the case. Fully upgraded Gondor infantry will be much the same sort of thing. They'll be a little bit more capable of dealing damage, but they will still suffer in this fight, most certainly. Marksman of Care Andros, this is the area where the defenders can, of course, uh, do a lot of damage. The Gondorians may not be quite as damage-focused as Merc, but they still have very fine archers indeed, including the Marksman of Care Andros. They can also do decently in melee, even in this kind of environment, with their two-handed sword. Pelagia Marines, Javelins, of course, will be very useful, especially with the superior terrain they have, going to be more difficult for the Lothlorien and Linden players to get their javelins into a good position without getting damaged, whereas that's not going to be a problem for the Pelagia Marines. Veterans of are a fantastic unit of defensive archers, which they may need to uh, be against uh, a faction like Lothlorien. Woodland Protectors, we've already seen them for Lothlorien, now we shall see them for Merc with very similar stories with the Pelagia Marines. Their defensive position will give them their advantages. Hiri Peng, the heavy Merkwood archer, once again, the terrain is going to be everything for them, and if Merkwood can really utilise their ranged damage, it could be a long day at the office for the three attackers. Axman for Sarnak for a bit of AP, that will be useful against Imladris, less so against the other two. Hiriak will be fantastic for holding the line, alongside the blades of Emendwyr, some woodland protectors here also. Going for a few of the Emendwyr units, which means they're going to be trading relatively evenly with the entry-level units from the other factions, Sans, Linden. Um, but that's all they can really hope for. Like The higher quality units from the attackers will still outperform them. They're going to be reliant on their archers still, of course. Wooden Rail Patrol are here. One has to wonder what happened to the Rohirrim here. I guess uh, Thranduil forcibly evicted them and they went running to the other elves for help. Akin to calling the teacher on someone who's been, uh, who's been bad. Wooden Rail Patrol. Blades of Emendwyr once again. More of the heavier Merkwood units there. Hiri Alpha are going to be an important unit with that armor upgrade. Elders of the Elven King, the Silverthorn Arrows could be really useful given the terrain as well, because it'll make life much more difficult for the attackers to walk through that arrow fire. Upgraded Hiri Lang, Wardens of Ammon Lank, again that armor piercing in melee, not going to be quite as useful against the non-Imlatris factions, I mean it will be against the Lauren Armed um, units to be honest, but not as much as it would otherwise be. Elven King's Palace Guard with the armor upgrade as well, so the Elven factions of course are not going to be shy about committing some of their really high tier units to this fight. But you're interesting to see how the Palace Guard perform in this sort of situation. They will be backed up by Gondorian bodyguards as well in the Nimlothian Honor Guard. They're going to be good for holding the line, it must be said. Um, but again, what's really going to shine through here for Gondor if the defenders are going to win will be their more defensive qualities, more so than their ability to do damage in this kind of company. The Athelian Rangers, however, are going to be a bit of a break in that uh, mold because of the body piercing that Rangers have, of course. The Wounds of Minas Thiel have got those armor-piercing projectiles which will be good for hunting down those elite tier units, something like the Gwaith, Emirdane will be one such unit, and the Alderan Blade Masters also. Greenwood Rangers more damaging than the Athelian Rangers, certainly, but two units of body-piercing projectiles, and then here in the TC, Wounds of the White Tower by the looks of things. Indeed it is, with some Fountain Guard as well here at the back, covering the TC. There's nothing in behind here, but reasonably high tier armies from Gondor and Merkwood, as perhaps we would expect. So, without further ado, Let's begin. So then, let's see how this mostly elven civil war develops. It's actually, on more than one occasion, we've seen Merc would be the defend, well, the attacker on Edoras and be singled out before they ever really reach the walls. Now that isn't going to happen this time because, of course, the defenders aren't really going to be sallying out at all. But even so, we've seen the disadvantage of being an elven faction or elven an an, an elven faction on this map for a lightly armoured elven faction in particular, so all of the more basic units that Lothlorien and Linden have may not actually be all that good in this sort of situation, especially given the more archer-heavy nature of both Merkwood and their Gondorian allies on this occasion, so it may fall upon Imladris to be a little bit more of a bulwark in this fight, although even they have elected to invest a little bit more into numbers, which under normal circumstances I would say is a good idea, but the elves are never going to have 
massive armies anyway, so I think it does behoove at least one of these armies perhaps to go a little bit more into the quality side of things. Blades of Emmendweer and Spears are setting up now. It does look as though the defenders are going to take a little bit of a step back in some places and not defend the walls directly, which I can understand why, but they do need to be a little bit careful because if they leave this road open, Imladris could come into the side of the Gondorian defence over here and it does look as though they are a little bit more intent on setting up near the walls to try and stop Lothlorien's passage into the settlement. And now we can hear the Elven war cries starting up, the Woodland Realm patrol a little bit further forward and they are going to start shooting at probably not the Imladris Guardians if I had to guess. Are they going to be going after Swords of Rivendell? No, they're going after something a little bit further back here. Looks like some Noritino warriors were under fire there. I mean, the Spears of Rivendell wouldn't be the worst target to go after. Yes, they are not the strongest unit in melee that Imladris have, but even without an armor upgrade, they're going to be quite vulnerable to missile fire. The other NY Swordmasters can fall back on that very high armor value that they have, so it'll be a little bit more difficult to kill them quickly, but even then, the lack of shield is a big deal. We're going to be seeing the Palisade Wall crumbling animation quite a few times in quick succession, I would suggest. Meanwhile, over here, rather interesting to note that it doesn't look as though Gondor are really too interested in attacking these elven units as they approach the wall, which is a little bit strange, I must say. Yes, they're only basic Lothlorien units, but if you can really cut down the manpower of these elven attacking factions, you can then rely on numbers to simply clog up the streets within Edoras. And they won't really be able to do too much about that. I mean, certainly the Karen Amroth Rangers is that sort of thing you want to be trying to focus down if you can, because even the threat of a unit like that getting into a good position for the attackers represents a huge potential problem for the defenders. Interesting there. Rams phasing through one another. Better get used to this little cutscene for the next little while. Several of them are going to start crumbling. Linden are also now moving forward. Interestingly, now the Woodland Round Patrol also a few return volleys from the Harland and Riders coming in. And one of the gates falls. Yeah, Woodland Round Patrol, not exactly the best under arrow fire, but the Harland and Riders won't be either of the Woodland Round Patrol turn their bows onto Linden, but they are going to pull back, get themselves into a more set position a little bit further up the hill. That terrain advantage is going to be fairly brutal for the attacking elves to try and dislodge the defenders from. And skirmishing into the heavier Merkwood units, but especially the Gondorians, is not going to be the easiest task. A few kills being inflicted there. Stamped in Ladris Guardians, no armor upgrade for them, but you have your funds are obviously going to be a little bit more limited when you're the attackers in this situation. You can hear the sounds of battle erupting now. Uh, civilians. Okay, I've never been a big fan of this sort of thing um, that Valkarion is doing here, where you send in a very low tier unit first of all, but you're not really doing anything else. You're not either shooting in with missiles or you're not going to be intent on sending reinforcements in in melee, because it's so obvious that they're not going to be able to achieve all that much, so you're eff effectively throwing away manpower for no good reason. It's not a crippling blow for the defenders, but it's still completely unnecessary, and these Spears of the Wood, of course, are going to be able to kill off the civilians very, very quickly. I mean, even over here, the Gondor Spearmen against the Spears of the Wood. The Spears of the Wood are a better melee combatant than the Gondor Spearmen, but with the higher armor and the more defensive attributes like that, the Gondor Spearmen could be considered a more useful unit in this kind of situation, but only if Lothlorien were shooting at them, which I doubt Y2K86 is going to want to do. Gondor Militia Infantry also having to deal with Blades of the Wood, so Lothlorien, in all of these little melee engagements so far, are outclassing them, although at least they're 2v1ing over here, but flanking in from the side with these blades of the wood. It's not going to be looking too good for this initial Gondorian assault. <coughs> Linden starting to do their work. Veterans of Osculeth are going to be shooting down now though as well. Yeah, that didn't last too long. <coughs> Excuse me. But yeah, Gondor definitely, if they're going to make the most out of that situation, they're going to need to start using their missiles to try and cut the Lothlorien manpower down to size a little bit. In Ladris, maybe they're going to start moving in. Swordsman to Swordsman, perhaps. Swords of Rivendell against the Blades of Emmendweer. Two very similar units. One thing that the Swords of Rivendell do have is they can have their armor upgraded, but they don't ha have that on this occasion, so very likely to be quite an even fight, although I think the the Blades of Emmendweer will probably be successful, purely because of the position that they occupy. Swords of Rivendell. Also, the 
Imladris sentries are definitely a target that uh, surely that are going to be focused down. We have only 49 remaining, so it seems like the defenders concur with that. Meanwhile, Lothlorien doing a good job so far. I mean, this is the problem. Like Lothlorien's basic units, very often we see them kind of underperform because players know that they're pretty soft targets for missiles, but at least initially here, they've been allowed to engage in pure melee with the Gondorians, and that elven nature of theirs is going to be enough to see them over the line in terms of sheer quality. These Gondor spearmen are doing a pretty good job over here against the Spears of the Wood, continuing to hold the line. I mean, it will take a little while for them to displace fully upgraded Gondor spearmen, but maybe Lothlorien could be considered guilty of overextending themselves a little bit. These Blades of the Wood getting a little bit too far ahead of themselves, already a bit depleted. And now the numbers advantage that the Gondor infantry has is going to be enough for them to probably go on to win this fight. Woodland Protectors still at the top of the hill there. A little bit further down, Lauren Island Spears now moving in, so some of the stronger Elven units now making their presence felt on the front line. But you know, the Gondorians, they're good enough at holding the line, and we are now seeing the Gondorian missiles come into play as well. So that is starting to carve through certainly some of the more lightly armoured units that Lothlorien have at their disposal. The, Lor the Lauren Island units, of course, will be significantly better at taking regular arrow fire than their more lightly armoured brethren. Meanwhile, Karen Amroth Rangers are firing in. I do wonder what they're going after. I think they're going after that unit of Gondor Imption. Maybe not the best of targets. If you can shoot up through that central corridor there, that should perhaps be what your uh, intent should be. Swords of Rimdale are going to be backed up by some Spears of Rimdale, putting a little bit more pressure on this little Merkwood defence over here. Meanwhile, Woodland Protect is getting shot up by more of those archers over there. Norton and Warrior, so the attack is setting up into a good position with their ranged units. Well, Linden now moving up the hill, taking the more direct route. Harlinden infantry, there are far too many of them for a single unit of Blades of Emond Weir to fight. They've set up a secondary line back there, have Merkwood, but again, losing an entire unit of swordsmen relatively cheaply against this Linden assault. I mean, Linden, in a grindy sort of assault like this could turn into, it's not exactly the kind of battle they tend to do well in. Their light armour really does get exposed in this sort of situation more often than not. But much like Lothlorien on the other side, they've been allowed to get into melee, and this is where they can be at their very best, using that melee defense, using that high damage that a lot of their units tend to have. Greenwood Rangers getting into position, which is maybe a little bit risky, because as soon as they reveal themselves, and unsurprisingly, BC-70 is going to start shooting in to knock them down a peg or two. Piri Peng also firing away. I mean, it's going to be very difficult, really, to keep track of all the damage that the defending and attacking archers are doing, but it is going to be, I think, the deciding factor in this fight. Especially if Merkwood can really get those good shots because of their higher damage. The lighter, the more lightly armoured units of all three of the attacking factions here are very likely to be easy pickings for them. Woodland Round Patrol, meanwhile, shooting that way. These Woodland Protectors from Lothlorien are going to be shown the business end of those swords of the Blades of Amanduir, and they will be victorious there, continuing to cover for that unit of archers and allow them to shoot for a little bit longer. How long that will last for, I am not sure. Meanwhile, this unit of Gondor infantry is still doing very well. The Karen Amroth range is out of ammunition already, so maybe a little bit wasteful, really, of the ammunition here, the rousing Gondor spearmen. But this unit of Gondor infantry has done very well for itself, actually, with support, of course, but they've managed to hold the line. Probably got a pretty decent kill count for themselves as well as the units that they're fighting continually get more and more worn down. Still Lothlorien throw themselves against the silvery steel wall. Still a lot of units left that can still be committed forwards if needs be, but some of these outer defences may be looking a little bit worse for wear. I and mean, here the Hiriak are being committed now. If they were going to be committed anyway, they should have been committed sooner than that, I would have thought. Anyway. Some good shots coming in from the Fallen and Archers further down the hill. But a combination of Hiri Alth and Hiri Ak, that is a good front line from Merkwood, certainly. A very solid unit of spears, combined with a really good unit of line infantry for damage. And that armor upgrade is also really going to help them. Apologies for that, I thought my phone was going off then. I've got it on silent, but it wasn't. It's just got low battery. Meanwhile, 
more of the Heriac being committed towards the front line, so a lot more of these heavier Merkwood units are being committed a little bit more readily. I mean, the Harland infantry are very good, but when they're under Javelin Vine, when they're going up against a unit of a higher tier than themselves, they're still not going to be able to do the business there. It's more against similar tier units of line infantry and melee that they can be very effective. Meanwhile, out of ammunition, Forland and Archers trying to shore up this attack, keep it going for a little bit longer. Is that going to be all that effective, though? I'm not sure. Out of ammunition, the veterans of Osgiliath are going to be blocking the flanking manoeuvre that was coming in for a little while there on those Hiriak, going to be blocking in Ladrus's progress with that armour upgrade as well. They're locked morale, I believe, the veterans of Osgiliath too, so that means they are going to fight to the bitter end. And against the basic Imladris units, they'll actually probably be just fine. If they do come up against something like the Imladris Guardians, though, they will get into a bit of trouble. Any of the Imladris heavy swordsmen will also likely uh, not be a great foe for them to fight either Noritino Warriors, more at home in melee than the Woodland Round Patrol. So the Imladris Archer there should be victorious. Also Lothlorian units coming up over the hill after the Blades of Amanduir have been mopped up. So this unit of Woodland Round Patrol now isolated and will surely be destroyed with Lauren Armed Axemen on one side and Noritino Warriors on the other. Well, still that unit of Gondor Infantry holds the line. It's not much of a line anymore though. Karen Amroth range is showing that in melee they can be a useful unit as well with that two-handed sword. But another unit of Gondor infantry rises to take its place. They will continue to hold on. And there come the Lothlorian split shot projectiles as well, ripping their way through that unit of Pelagia Marines that's at the top of this hill. Still over here. I mean these two Merkwood lines that they're using to hold the line against Linden have been pretty effective, but Elsewhere in the settlement, Imladris and Lothlorien are starting to gain a little bit more traction. And Nolder and Guard are also being committed now, so it's going to be a little bit more questionable as to whether Merc would have got the quality advantage on this front line now, but the Javelin's coming in, trying to equalise that fight again. Answer Force is evenly matched so far. Swords of Rivendell coming in to try and help shore up the Linden push. This unit of Hiriak won't last for too much longer. That unit of Swords of Rimdown might be the final straw. And then, I mean, again, it's singular units that are holding lines at this point. And it's whether or not they can hold lines long enough for more of those missiles to find their marks. Again, nice target for the Hiri Pang to shoot into. Most of it's just basic units, but you're going to get plenty of kills. And the manpower of the attackers is much more likely to fall apart when you're talking about three Elven factions on the attack. They can't afford to take losses in the same way the human and certainly orcish factions can. This unit of Wooden Round Patrol is certainly not going to last too much longer. I do not believe any of the attacking elves have gone around this way. Perhaps they see it as too long a route to take while they're going to be clearly shot up by archers the entire way. Marks Macare Andros literally just running out of ammunition, pulling out their swords. They'll still be a useful melee combatant, of course. As we've already seen from the Karen Amroth Rangers, well, Gondor Infantry, one of the most iconic looking units in the game. Victory seems to have done, which is a little bit surprising considering there's Lauren Arn Spearman, but perhaps that's just the, the latent effects of the support they were getting from the marksman of Karen Andros, and as that wears off, maybe they will be pushed back. That armour upgrade will, of course, mitigate a good amount of that damage that Lothlorien are trying to do, unless uh, we start to see more Lauren Arn Warriors on this front line then the armour piercing of those heavy axes could be much more of a problem. Here Pan continuing to shoot down the hill into those Harland and Guards. Noldering and Guard, we've also got the Mithlon Marines moving in. Out of ammunition. A good melee combatant as well, makeshift line infantry that they are. Plenty of spears still here though, I mean the void of all of the heavier units the Merc had, had at one point it's now being filled by a single unit of Woodland Protectors. Not quite as impressive, but they'll still be good enough to hold the line for now. You can see further down the hill as well. It looks like Linden also adding more of their own units. Finding that unit of Hiriak is bulldozed out of the way, but not before they've achieved a fair amount in this battle already. Now this unit of Veterans of Osgilia, there's really not that many of them left. And now they're going to be completely surrounded and surely destroyed in the same way as that unit of Woodland Round Patrol that we mentioned earlier. But they did their job, they held on, bought more time, more missiles, able to find their marks. And that's going to be the way that the defenders have to play this. Just 
Just make the attackers bleed as much as possible for every inch, and eventually they should falter. Problem is, the same also applies to them to a certain extent. And also, if they allow it to become all about quality in melee with stuff like Imladris Pikes, Kindred of Caliborn in melee, that's a dangerous game for them to play. You can still see there's plenty of Linden units outside, including Pikes and some really nasty units of Swordmasters, and Older and Blademasters are still a long way away. Lucky there's not a unit of cavalry that defenders can use, otherwise, exposed units like that would be potentially in a bit of trouble. Pelagia Marines, another unit of Gondor infantry after they got pushed back again, but. I really get the feeling that Lothlorien in particular are running out of steam. I mean, over on the other side, Imladris and Linden have been able to bounce off one another a little bit more, whereas that isn't really a luxury Lothlorien have had. They've had to force their way through more or less on their own, and I don't really know how much they're going to have left. I mean, they've got a few units left out here, but it's not exactly a veritable horde of orcs, is it? Can that quality be enough? I feel as though Lothlorien probably need to be a little bit more conservative for the time being and allow... Imladris and Linden to take the wheel for a moment, and then perhaps all three of them can regroup at the top of the hill for one final alpha strike on the town centre. I mean, Edoras is not a particularly complicated map, even with the extra roads that WK added way back when. It, has, it still isn't a very difficult settlement to understand now, is it? Mark McCare, Andros, and Hiri Lang holding the line. Unit of out of ammunition, Hiri Peng coming in as well and causing the Swords of Rimdale to break by stuff. I mean, 42 of them, that's actually a fairly significant thing. The elves can't afford too much of that, and it's fairly rare that we see a faction like Imladris having to deal with stuff like the routing mechanics in this sort of way. Little Marines, Harlan Guard. I mean, I can understand why Linden are reluctant to send their pikemen forward, uh, but they may not have too much of a choice if this keeps up. They're going to need to keep this attack going. The Imladris Guardians are on the way forward. I mean, the Mithlon Swordmasters are doing their best. Again, it's plenty of heavy swordsmen here with the Mark Macare Andros, Mithlon Swordmasters, Hiri Lang. All units favouring a weapon with a little bit more finesse, perhaps. Meanwhile, Lothlorien continue to be bottled up in a combination of the rank and file Gondorian line infantry added in with a little bit of damage from those Mirkwood Heavy Swordsmen. It's going to be a real problem for a unit like the Blades of the Wood, especially against those Hiri Lang. Like, they're just really not going to enjoy being in melee with them. Bad news for Lothlorien, really. I mean, they've got some Woodland Protectors moving in now. Staff Masters have revealed themselves, but they're not a very damaging unit. They'll just keep the attack going for a little bit longer. But perhaps that's all Lothlorien can hope for. Just keep this attack going and hope that you're allies on the other side can start to make some real inroads. They're trying to use their javelins, but I don't know if they have the angle. I mean, they're, again, they're just shooting in a rather limited fashion. Elven King's Palace Guard perhaps trying to use those silver thorns. Depleted units of Wooden Round Patrol, but the more ammunition they can get down range, the better it's going to be for them going after some more exposed units back there. Well, did the Imladris Guardians arrive on the front line at any point? I mean, the upgraded variant of them did. No, yeah, several units of Imladris Guardians. I mean, a lot of them are actually very depleted at this point, but the arrival of more Imladris reinforcements should be enough to start pushing the defenders in this location back a little bit further. And are Linden making inroads over here? I mean, they are. The arrival of another unit of Mithlon Swordmasters should be enough to give them a significant advantage over something like Woodland Protectors in Melee. They continue to hold the line, all of these uh, Elven Spears. More reinforcements are forthcoming. The defenders are not eager to give the Elves any sort of ground. I mean, this, this terrain that they have is working for them, the defenders, so it is actually in their favour, I think, to continue to send reinforcements forward and continue to use the vantage point that this offers. Because that's part of the reason, I think, why Lothlorien and Linden are so reluctant to send some of these units forward, because they know they're going to get focused down pretty quickly. I still think they will be forced back eventually, but I think it's a good idea for the defenders to try and hold on here for a little bit longer and try and get some killing done. I mean, this is where the attackers will be hoping they can make a break in the defenders' armour, push through here, and then they can get into the side of this defence over here, which they just committed a fresh unit of marksmen to. Would come the Nimlothian Honor Guard, though, so again, they're really not eager 
to allow that to continue. Greenwood Rangers are getting focused down. There's only 11 of them left. Have they been used well enough? We shall have to wait and see. Still a little of Marines on the front line, but they're shaken. More Elven routing, perhaps. Lorenan Spearman with those staff masses. Much more of a comprehensive assault now from Lothlorien. It may be one of the last that they're able to muster. This is another front line where the defenders might need to send another unit in to keep it going. Keep it fighting hard. Pelagia Marines getting a good volley of javelins there into the Woodland Protectors. The volley in return is pretty feeble. But that's what having superior terrain is going to get you. Killing off more of these melee combats as well is going to maybe flip the melee fight back in your favour without having to commit another unit of melee infantry, which may be for the best. Axman of Lasarnak are there. Where is the armour piercing and best served? Going up against the heavily armoured units from Linden, perhaps? Or how many of the units from Ladras are actually left? Whitey Mirdane are moving forward, so that might be a little bit of a concern. The addition of those Nimlothi and Onagar has made the situation somewhat stickier for the attackers again over here. Hmm. It seems certain only a military genius could win this battle. A unit of Noldoran Guard being committed forward. So, really putting that unit of Marks and Akera Andros that was committed forward under the cosh now. Something significant is going to have to be moved forward. 32 Wooden Realm Patrol, probably not the answer. Elven King's Palace Guard most certainly would be. A combination of the two would be ideal. As much manpower on that front line as you can manage. You Harland and Guard trying to fire in, but it's not going to be enough to deter the upgraded Palace Guard from doing their thing. As good a unit as the Nolder and Guard are, the Palace Guard operate on a different level. And that armor piercing that they possess will also be really, really useful for dealing with the only heavily armored class of unit that Linden can feel in their Nolder. Madras Guardian's another more substantial unit moving forward. The Gwythi Miradei moving in, which that will be a real problem for them not them locking on. Because those Elven Warhammers will start to crack through that Gondorian plate without too many issues, especially with a bit of backup from those Woodland Protectors further down. But that's a sign that Lorien are prioritising that route up the hill a little bit more so. I think, honestly, at this stage as well, the defenders have gone all in on this to an extent that they can't really afford to not just send everything in and either win or lose the battle in the locations that the fight is currently taking place in because if the attackers are able to wash over this defensive position get rear charges on the other two choke points that haven't yet broken things could get a little bit messy I mean Axman of Lasarnak coming onto the front line now they'll be pretty decent against the lower armed units just having more high damage infantry on this front line will be enough to cause this Lorian assault to start to stutter a little bit again but going axe to axe with the Lauren Armed Warriors, you back the elves in that particular fight. Ooh, Athelian Rangers trying to get into a good position, trying to be decisive here in the late game, but Watchers of the Golden Woods seeing them. And that's going to be really bad news for the Gondorians there. Wounds of Minas Athel could use their armor piercing arrows. Ooh, are they losing their bottle? Are they going to try and retreat? Wounds of Amon Lank shooting away. More javelins coming in, doing a pretty good amount of damage to the Mithlon Swordmaster here. Was that enough to rout them? It is. Run for it, lads, is not really the most elven uh, enunciation of that uh, desire to retreat. But no matter. Whitey Miradain doing their thing. I mean, the Nim Nimlothian Onaga, much in the same way as the other Gondorian units that we've seen in this fight so far, even when outclassed, they're still going to offer you the ability to hold the line for a decent amount of time. Forward coming unit of Elder Enway Spearman, so surely at this point. The defenders are probably sensing the writing on the wall for these positions that they've taken up. A lot of those arrows there just being sent way up into the sky. I think they may be trying to go after the Watchers of the Golden Wood, but... With that angle of attack, you're not going to be doing an awful lot of damage, especially not to a unit that's got multiple HP, very nice armor values. Well, that was the Imladris General. We've already seen Imladris route a couple of times in this battle, so maybe that could be a telling blow. Meanwhile, those Kindred of Caliborn, we've seen them get some pretty nasty volleys off so far in this fight. 
especially against stuff like Axemen of the Sarnak, Wounds of Ammon Lank, dangerous, high damage, armor piercing units in melee that do not have a shield. You're going to be doing plenty of damage against stuff like that. Elder Runway Spearmen pushing forwards. And this is the problem. This is going to be one of those transitional phases in which the attackers tend to seize the advantage. They're going to find the gaps here now. Elder and Spearman pushing through, engaging that unit of Hiri Pang in melee. If they could get a unit into the rear of those Axemen of the Sarnak as well, those Lothlorien units can burst through that defensive position as well. And they've still got several units over here in the Lothian Honor Guard and Palace Guard that will essentially be left behind as a rear guard. And that will not be ideal for the defenders. They've done a pretty good job so far, the defenders, at doing a lot of damage to the attackers as they push forward, but is it going to be enough in the end? Rumored Rangers out of ammunition, presumably. Only seven of them remain at this stage, at any rate. Nolder and Blade Masters are in melee, 48 of them. They're going to absolutely carve their way through Pelagia Marines in melee, desperately pulling out their swords and trying to defend themselves. Man. I mean, these Elder Runway Spearmen are a little bit outnumbered, and the armor piercing on those Gondorian Axemen may be a little bit concerning for them, but there should be reinforcements following right in behind them, so maybe it isn't all that bad for them. Meanwhile, a few routing units, some Swords of Rivendell there, but Lauranan Warriors on the front line with the Staff Masters. Both the units armor piercing, actually, albeit the Staff Masters' attack is so low that. You could hardly call them the answer to dealing with armoured units, but still it all adds up and armour piercing is never going to go to waste against a Gondorian army. I believe the Rangers are the only units in their roster which are not in some way reliant on their armour values. Axe blows raining down upon the Elder Enway, but victory seems certain for them, showing off their quality there. Gwaiti Muradain pushing forward, they've taken a bit of damage, they're a bit bloodied, but Ultimately, victory was always going to be theirs in that kind of fight, so all of a sudden, the attackers do have momentum here. Is that the key shift in the battle? Losing a lot of individual units here, the defenders, which are essentially being left behind, including some very key ones, as we mentioned. Pikes are now being pushed forward as well from Linden, Mythlon, Pikeman, taking some losses, to be fair. Part of that is probably due to the Athelian range of the Warns of Minas I mean, that's a good location for the defenders to shoot into. Try and cut the attackers down to size as much as they possibly can. Fountain Guard. to try and hold this line I guess but are they going to do so in the hope that these ranged units can do their thing? Elders of the Elven King maybe? Imladris Guardians move forward to support the Elder Enway Spearmen but at this point with Fountain Guard joining in the situation becomes a little bit more precarious for Imladris. They have pushed their Gwaiti Mirdane into position as well but a few units are as scary when holding the line in close quarters like this as the Fountain Guard. That armor piercing, of course, is going to be very useful against these high end Imladris troops. But Lothlorien are coming through. There is a gap in the side of the line, and a unit of extremely depleted Gondor infantry is not going to hold them back for long. But ones of the White Tower will hold them back for longer. Further down the hill, Noratuno warriors. Still, there's Elven King's Palace Guard over there, and they may actually. You know, the damage from the Athelian Rangers over there has been extreme and the palace guard continuing to give their best in melee as well, so the defenders did make the attackers pay for that, even though they, the dam did burst, so to speak, but they were made to pay for it, and I think that's, considering it was a transitional phase in the battle, that's the best the defenders can hope for in a situation like that. Fountain guard doing their thing, need to hope that units like these woodland protectors can't offer too much in the way of support. That is a lot of Lothlorien units, and a single unit of Warns of the White Tower is being asked to hold them at bay, and that is also where the Gondorian General is, so he's getting involved. 
damage from on high. 32 civilians are going to be sent to the front line. I mean, it is, at this stage, primarily a Gondorian front line which is holding on. Most of Merc would appear to have committed themselves. It's really only the Wardens of Amon Rank and the Elders of the Elven King that remain. Everything else is Gondorian. The Elders in a pretty good position there to shoot into the sides of that Lothlorien assault, and that is exactly the sort of support that the Wardens of the White Tower needed. I mean, the staff masses are not that good under Aragvai, so they're going to get cut down to size very, very quickly. In come the civilians, already shaken. You return to the town centre after taking a real beating, and then you're immediately told to go back and engage the Noldorin Blade Masters in melee. No rest for the weary. But yeah, you can see that the Gondorians are really struggling on the front line. They just don't have enough manpower at this point to withstand the, superior, the numerically superior army that's standing in front of them, and also the quality that's involved there. I mean, there were Kindred of Caliborn, there's Watchers of the Goldenwood, Whitey Mirdane, Noldorin Blade Masters, some of the scariest elven units that there are. And yes, there's Fountain Guard, there's Wardens of the White Tower, but not in enough numbers, and even then, they're not really on the same level as the units that they're facing off against. And desperation as highly depleted units throw themselves in to try and slow the Alban advance, but I think from here, with the momentum they have, the attackers should probably be able to carry this through for a victory. They should. But will they? Attacks coming in from on high. The spears of Rivendell now, the, again. The defence falls apart, they're starting to rush forward. Not sure where the Nolder and Blade Masters are going necessarily. Gonna, uh, they're going to go down to try and kill off the uh, Elven King's Palace Guard, who are still fighting and probably would have finished off the Mithlon Pikemen actually, but. It's going to be a bit of a formality given the relative strengths of the Noldorin and the Palace Guard at this stage. Warns of Minas Thiel. Firing in at point blank, which is all the elves can really do at this stage, I suppose. Well, and the remaining Gondorians, Warns of Amon Lank in melee, pulling out their axes. It's really just a case of how many kills the defenders can get before they fall at this point, I would suggest. Getting into the, uh, the elves of the Elven King. It's not going to go all that well for the Spears of Rivendell, though. Shots in the back from those Athelian Rangers who now also get engaged by those Kindred of Caliborn. And given the depleted nature of both of these units, you would really back the Elves as they one swing is all it takes to slice through a Ranger. Meanwhile, Action of the Sarnak consolidating with what remains of the Wands of the White Tower, continuing to hold on as long as they can. Piercing. And they're continuing to throw themselves against the elders of the Elven King, but in so doing, they're effectively completely ignoring the wounds of Minas of Thiel, who, in terms of the actual damage they're dealing at range with those armor piercing arrows, are probably more dangerous in many ways. I mean, it doesn't really matter whichever one you go after, the other one is going to shoot into your back, but you know, those Elder Renway Swordmasters are going to take a lot of damage from that, and in fact, they will end up losing that fight regardless. Woodland Protectors are shooting at the Wards of Minas of Thiel, killing off individual units all the while. Those Wards of Amon Lank are only going to hold on for so long against Watchers of the Goldenwood and Noldor and Blade Masters. Have they indeed? Lots of these elves are bloodied though. Kindred of Caliborn victorious. The defeat seems certain for the Wards of the White Tower, to the surprise of absolutely no one, given they're going up against the Warhammers and Pikes that Imladris have to offer. Runway Spearman moving in to finally stop the Wands of Minas Thiel from shooting. With the assistance of Hiri Lang, however, that was very short lived indeed as they rout. As Wands of Amon Lank still holding on. What will the Wands of Minas Thiel do? I mean, they are a multiple HP archer, but they're not the best in melee, to be honest. They and the Elders of the Elven King will almost certainly be the last ones left alive. Only 19 Gwaithi Mirrodain left alive, but they've really been tasked with an awful lot in this fight. Finally, the Gondorian General falls. Given the odds he's been facing, I'm surprised he didn't die off sooner, to be honest, but there you go. Oof. 
crushed by that hammer. Only seven Wounds of Ammon Lake remain. One Woodland Protector remains. The Elder Enway Swordmasters fall away. Elders of the Elven King are almost certainly going to be the last defensive unit left alive, I would suggest. They're going to try and pull back and use more of their arrows. They will do a little bit more damage that way, but... And they are going to shoot in. The Silver Thorns means that it will be a little bit more difficult to advance towards them, if nothing else. Want to minister field defeat is a distinct possibility against the units they're facing off against, but they'll do their best. Yeah, and that's going to be it. Two volleys was all they managed. Killed off a few more, watched the Golden Wood, but now it's going to be a fight in melee. I mean, given the numbers are what they are, the Elders will win that fight now, but... It doesn't really matter, they'll win that fight, but the fights that are to come... I mean, it is still a very close battle. It's just... Ever since the attackers seized the momentum here on the final push towards the Golden Horn, the defenders were always going to have a real issue in trying to get it back. The only way they would have got it back, I think, is if they had a really well-placed unit of rangers, in addition to all of the ammunition they already had at their disposal. Um, but yeah, as it is, they did not. And to be fair, the attackers did a good job at dealing with the, ooh, that bloody face on that one elder of the Elven King. But um, in fairness, the attackers did do a good job at skirmishing down those Athelian Rangers before they had the chance to do that. So in many ways, there wasn't really much else the defenders could have done once the battle had reached that point. And in the end, despite having smaller attacking armies for the elves, the same was also true of the defenders, I suppose, given one of the defenders was Mirkwood. But this will be an attacker victory, but I feel as though people will probably be okay with that, given that there's elven factions on the attack as well. The ultimate popularity contest. Who do you like more, Imladris or Mirkwood? Do they have anything else left? Swords of Rimmendale pushing towards the town centre. Probably going to knock these units back into, back into action. both fronts. I mean, there is Thranduil holding his swords backwards. Well, there he goes. Oh no, that's Linden. That's Círdan. So Linden's in general's gone. I think Haldir, ironically, is still alive. Where is he at? I think we'd be able to see him because of the red cape. I guess everyone's so caked in blood and viscera at this point that it doesn't stick out quite so much. So the staff masses also have red capes. Back of the Swords of Rivendell. But Thranduil, his, his fate is surely sealed at this point anyway. It was another good fight, actually. Always interesting to see these elven battles, because it very often does come down to those battles of quality. And of course, the attackers are going to have more of these units available to them. And we saw on more than one occasion... 2v1s of that nature. Palace Guard, well, the Nimlothian Honor Guard having to deal with stuff like the Gwaiti Mirdain. Palace Guard and Mulder and Blademasters facing off against one another. There goes Thranduil. As was foretold, there goes one Warden of Minas Athiel. Where's he going? Well, he missed. How embarrassing. <laughs> Now they're going to go back to the town centre. Let's go to show how tough some of these really high-end elven units are with all that melee defence and second hit point that they have. With how they can continue to fight even when all hope is very clearly lost for a fairly extended period of time. Back up the hill. They're going to try and take the TC. Three Swords of Rimdale against one Lord of the Minister Theo. The well, they're going to knock these units back into... Back into action, although there's only one of them left. Swords of Rimdale likely to lose that fight. Speaking of which, Elders of the Elven King. Now completely destroyed. I mean, you can have a look at it. 3% in it. That's really all that remains. That represents 3% of the Elven army. 
goes to show how small the Alban armies are in general. Swords of Rimdell eventually being destroyed, Walter Minister Thiel and eight Gondor spearmen remain, and they will charge to their doom. There's also one here yet. Those Gondor spearmen still perpetually routing. Okay, enough of this. Charge to your demise, and they immediately round. Oh, and that might be it. Warner Minister, Warner Minister Field taking a good amount of damage there from the Noritino warriors, nibbling away with their axes. Gondor spearmen return from routing. This is going to be it. Hiriak actually getting one more kill before the inevitable end. And Gondor will be standing a little bit longer than Mirkwood. It is the Gondorian flags that adorn the town centre after all. So perhaps it is only fair. Are they going to get those guys to return from routing as well? They're going to kill off the Gondorians to the last man. Well, that is what they are going to do, so... Fair enough. They're actually not returning from routing. That one there. That Gondor Spearman actually is lasting longer than I would have thought, given it was quite the Mirrodane that were clobbering him in melee. But there we go. 3% the difference, a very competitive game. I thought early on, actually, the defenders did pretty well. They were certainly doing a lot of damage to Lothlorien and Linden on the advance, but in the end, I mean, the numbers between the two sides were actually fairly similar in terms of size, but obviously the Elven factions have got that quality that they can bring to the table, and ultimately that momentum shift on that path towards the Golden Hall at the end was something which the defenders were always going to struggle to deal with. And Really, it's fine margins when you talk about how many units the attackers still had left. The slightest tweak for the defenders could have been enough to see them win it. Um, if they had managed to use those Athelian Rangers a little bit more effectively, I feel as though that is exactly the sort of thing which could have turned the battle around. But ultimately, it wasn't the defenders' fault that they couldn't use those. It was just the attackers seeing them in position and forcing them um, back off that position with their Watchers of the Golden Wood, so well spotted from Y2K. Because uh, that is a big difference maker, given how close this battle actually was in terms of the margins. But... Yeah, I think the attack is a good value for this, because it is difficult, actually, to assault a position like this with the defenders, or with the elves, I should say. Especially more lightly armoured elves like Linden, and quite a lot of the Lothlorien units that Y2K brought were also more lightly armoured. Even if Ladris didn't go for their a really heavier build, which would have made their army even smaller, to be fair. So perhaps it is worthwhile that they did lean a little bit more heavily on stuff like swords and spears of Rivendell rather than going only for their higher tier units, which will be better at taking that range damage, um, but will ultimately leave you even shorter in the melee stakes, which maybe would have been another way in which the defenders could have actually won this fight if Imladris had been tempted to go for that full quality build. But yeah, I feel as though the attackers were good value for this uh, win, but nothing against the defenders really. I don't think they could have done much else. Um, again, it all just comes down to using your ammunition maybe just a little bit better, positioning your units just a little bit better. Um, and yeah, maybe even just one of those units of Woodland Realm Patrol that got caught on the retreat, if they'd saved one of those, that would have been enough to make a difference, I think. Um, you know, Stuff like that can snowball later on into the game, but again, small tweaks, I'd say. So, let's see what did the damage for Beastie 70's army. Nolder and Blade Mass is getting 194 kills, which given that the defenders were mostly Mirkwood and upper-end Gondorians by the time the blade masses were committed. Those are all going to be pretty high quality kills. Obviously they were a big part of the momentum shift that we talked about. 103 kills on fallen archers, which is pretty damn good. They would have been skirmishing back and forth with other archers that are not particularly great in a skirmish fight either, I would imagine. Mythlon Marines getting 103 kills as well, so getting some javelin volleys before being involved in that uh, grindy fight up the hill, which initially wasn't going that well for Lindem, and of course it did turn around as the fight went along. 88 kills on Nolder and Guard as well, which considering they were a part of that fight as well, and they don't have the ability to soften the enemy up with some projectiles first. That's still a respectable kill count, to be sure. Um, so yeah, big thank you to Beastie70 for sending this one to me. Obviously, it's been quite a while since uh, you sent this one in, but I felt like I wanted to have a, a suitable gap between the last Edoras battle and this one. Uh, but I did want to show this one off, so uh, here it is. Um, and yeah, big thank you to all of the players that were a part of this battle as well. Plenty of familiar names. As for what's going to be coming up next, I believe the next battle replay coming up after this will be a Silmarillion one, showing off the new evil faction that has been added into that, the Horrors of Nandan Gorthab. Um, and following on from that, we're going to have a 
perhaps a more festive, wintry siege of Dale, WK's version of Dale. So that's obviously going to be a very large-scale battle replay. So that will be the next reforged battle that we see. And there are a few other bits and pieces as well. I've got one on Toll for Lass. I've got one on Mistrand. All that sort of stuff. So that's going to be for Reforged. And of course, Rise of Mordor. Uh, we'll be seeing what type of units people want me to take a look at in that next. The initial explorations into Rise of Mordor will continue at some point. Probably another video on that within December at some point. But again, I'm recording these a about three weeks ahead of time, so I want to give it a little bit of room and see how that first uh, that first video for Rise of Mordor does, because I'm a little bit rusty at, uh, at videos in that format, so hopefully people won't be too harsh on me. Um, but yeah, that's the basic idea, and then we will be moving into 2022, where who knows what's going to happen in 2022. Um, fairly early on in the year, I think I should be able to give an update on what I think may happen. Um, one thing that I'm very eager on doing, though, of course, is to update my hardware, which I think will become actually fairly necessary. I think my PC is slowly but surely coming to the end, um, so hopefully we will uh, we'll be able to fix that up fairly early in the new year. Um, but yeah, other than that, big thank you to Beastie70 once again for sending me this battle replay in. Um, this one worked flawlessly, so clearly it is only a Moria issue. You have no need to panic. Big thank you to all of the players that were part of this one once again. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you'll join me whatever is next.